Perhaps you thought we were done with news for today. Well, apparently not. We have leaked photos of the R6 from three different angles, and two new teleconverters, ones that are supposed to be coming out on Thursday. Let's get into it. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. Hi, I'm Simon, and this is The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one, so you won't miss any news. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video, including any gear discussed, are placed in the description down below. But before I get into today's pictures, just a quick reminder that I'm giving away, I'm still giving away this 50mm f1.8 lens. Contest ends July 31st. Subscribe to my channel for your chance to win. That's it. I do have more contest details in the description down below, as well as in this video here. We've got a bunch of photos. I've got three photos of the R6, so let's get into those right away. Now, in this first image, we have the R6 from the front angle, and we can see on top that we have a dial of some sort, and we don't see that on the R5. We also have two, I don't know if that's, it definitely looks like a button just to the bottom left of the mount. And then of course, down from the shutter button, about halfway down, we have this other, I don't know if that's a button. I don't know if it's any sort of indicator. And of course, right up top there, we have a LED and I'm expecting what that is. I'm expecting that's gonna be some sort of notification, uh, red light, white light, some sort of light indicating that we're recording, which would be really, really great. It's nice to see that on the front. And of course, those two little pinholes, I expect those to be microphones. So that's the front view. Now on the back, we can see it's got the flippy screen. It looks like a pretty normal camera. It looks like a pretty normal Canon camera, that is. On the viewfinder to the right, we see there's a little dial there. And of course, right immediately beneath the viewfinder, we have some sort of sensor there. And that's probably designed so that way, when you move away from the viewfinder or you move to the viewfinder, the camera knows whether to turn off the LCD or on the LCD or vice versa. So that's the view of the R6 from the back. And of course, the last view that we have is from the top. Now look at that. I'm still wondering what that button is, or sorry, that dial is. It's, there's, it's, let's go back to the front again. So if we go to the front, there's nothing written there. And if we go to this one here, it's like, is it a magical button? Have they, I bet you they've edited the top of this thing. There, there, I bet you there's stuff on there. If you look at it, you can kind of see it. It's almost too clean. They're teasing us. They're teasing us a little bit here. Um, so, who knows what that button is? Maybe it allows us to go between movies or video and photos. It's hard to say. We can see the record button there. Uh, there's another dial button towards the front near the shutter button. Um, but other than that, it looks like a pretty solid camera. It's a pretty decent sized camera. It's got a really good uh, grip on the front. So it should be, if you've got big hands, this is going to be really great. It's going to really fit well in your hands. And I think it's looking like a really good camera. So there we go. We've got video or we've got images of the R6, but there's still a lot of questions like, what is that dial on the top? What do you guys think that dial is? I'm kind of curious myself. Now, in terms of specifications, let's go over the specifications one more time. No surprises here. It's a 20 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. I don't know if it's 20 or 20.1 or 20.2. Um, and as I showed you guys on the weekend, uh, a 20 megapixel sensor is more than detailed enough for printing off 8x10s or 5x7s and still gives you room to crop. It does have IBIS. Um, if you have um, lenses that have image stabilization as well, you can get as many as 7 to 8 stops of stabilization. So that's really good. We get 12 frames per second mechanical and 20 frames per second electronic. No surprises there. Now this uh, just came out uh, a couple of weeks ago in a leak. The R6 is going to be capable of providing us with oversampled 5K video, which is really, really nice. We're going to get 4K 60, full HD at 120 frames per second. We're going to get Canon Log, 10-bit, and Zebras. No mention of whether we're getting focus peaking or not. Those usually go hand in hand, but not always. And here's the big thing, 10-bit, and that's great. Now, in the past, if this was 2018, I'd say, yeah, it's 10-bit, but you know what? It's going to be 420. It's, it's not going to be 422. I'd be surprised if they don't give us 422, but what do you guys think? Do you think they're going to claw back, they're going to use the cripple hammer, and they're going to remove some functionality and just give us 420? The R5 does have 422, and there are subtle differences, like Bluetooth, for example. The R5 has Bluetooth 5, whereas the R6 has Bluetooth 4.2. So there are some subtle differences. Do you think we'll get 422? It's really hard to say. Now, great news about the autofocus, we're gonna get the same autofocus specs as the R5. So that means eye detection, both animals and humans. We're gonna get face detection 
and we're going to get head detection. So if you're tracking a person with their face and they turn and they move, uh, you can't see their face anymore, the camera's still going to keep their heads in focus, which is really, really good news. Uh, there is no raw video mode, but for most ordinary filmmakers and photographers, I don't really think that's a big deal. I think for most of us, if we ended up having to deal with raw video, uh, we might start to panic and go, what do we do with this? So um, I don't think there's a big deal not having raw video on the R6. Other features of the R6, it does have the identical 5 million dot EVF as the EOS R5. Now that's half of what the rumored um, EVF resolution is on the A7S III, which is 9.4 million dots. But still 5 million, I think is fine. Um, it doesn't have a top-down screen as you could see from the previous images, and I'll just flash it up again one more time so you can see there is no uh, top-down LCD. And the build quality isn't as good as the R5. Now, some of you have said, well, I don't know, is, should I get this? Is it, uh, am I going to have to worry about it falling apart? Is, if I get a little bit of moisture, is this thing going to collapse and fall apart? I really wouldn't get too worried about that. The R5 is a 5 Series camera. Uh, it's the successor, essentially, to the 5D Mark IV. It's really built tough. It's for photographers that are using this thing day in and day out all the time. They're lugging it around in camera bags. It's getting bumped. It's getting dinged. The Canon 90D is weather resistant. The R6 is going to be weather resistant. There's no way Canon's going to say, yeah, you know what, un just under $2,500, we're not going to make this thing weather resistant. It doesn't make any sense. Don't feel you have to go to the R5 just to make sure you've got a, a camera that's built tough. I've got my 70D here, which I've been shooting for seven years. I've traveled around the world with it. It's had some minor bumps, but I look after it and, you know, it's fine. I've been shooting this channel with it from day one. And like I said, I've been using it for seven years, so I really wouldn't worry about it. I think it's really great to know that we have weather sealing. But one thing you gotta keep in mind, if you go ahead and slap on some of those cheaper lenses that don't have weather sealing, like the non-L series, then it kind of defeats the purpose. So the camera might be weather sealed, but if you slap on one of those uh, non-L series lenses and it's rainy, you're down at Niagara Falls, for example, where you get mist all the time and you get water damage in there, Warranty is not going to cover that, so keep that in mind. Build quality, we covered that. Uh, the EOS R6 also has dual SD card slots, and they are UHS-2, so that's more than capable enough for 4K video. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's got Bluetooth 4.2, whereas the EOS R5 has Bluetooth 5. And it has the exact same battery as the R5, and from everything that I've been able to determine, that these batteries are completely compatible with the batteries that came with the 5D Mark IV, which is great news for people who have Canon cameras, because they all seem to use that LP6N battery, and this uses the LPE6NH battery, so slightly different. We'll have to find out what the full specs. But what I suspect, I suspect this battery is going to have more milliamps, it's going to last a little longer, can handle more power um, demands. That's really what I think that's about. And again, the price is rumored to be under $2,500. Initially, I thought this camera could be anywhere from $2,299 up to $2,499, and I was basing that on the EOS R. So we'll just have to wait and see. We're only, what, two days away before we finally know what the price is on this. But wait, there's more. After I'd publish this video earlier today, Canon Rumors comes out with another piece on teleconverters that are going to be offered, and I decided at that point there wasn't enough news to put out another video. So right after work was over, I decided to go out for a bike ride with my son, have dinner. Then I popped up my laptop and look what we had. We had more information from Canna Rumors. So Canna Rumors is just dropping a ton of information today. And so let me just flash up the information on the teleconverters that I have for you. So we have two teleconverters and these are going to be announced on Thursday at 8 a.m. New York time. So the Canon RF 1.4 teleconverter, it has seven elements in four groups. It's about 71 millimeters by 20 millimeters and total length is around 40 millimeters and it weighs about 225 grams. So it's about half a pound. So it's decent, uh, but uh, not too much that you should have to worry about it. The Canon RF 2.0 teleconverter has nine elements in five groups. So it's got, a, it's got an extra group and two more elements and it's a little bit bigger. It's 71.2 millimeters, so the same as the uh, 1.4, but it's 39.3 millimeters and total length mounted is 60.6 millimeters and it weighs closer to a pound at 340 grams. So those are the two teleconverters. Now, as I posted in some of the comments today, what are these what are these teleconverters going to work with? Well, all the information I have right now is that it's going to work. Both of these will work with the 100 to 500, which will be announced on Thursday. 
the RF 600 millimeter and the RF 800 millimeter, which will be also announced on um, Thursday. And I think there's one more here. Let me just navigate down a little bit. Nope, that's it. So yeah, I now I, I want to caution you a little bit here because remember these are rumors, and while I believe that most of everything we've covered here today is solidly based in fact, and we're going to see most of what we most of everything I've talked about here, I do want to caution you. Um, doesn't mean that these are the only lenses that are going to work with those teleconverters. I, I just don't know that information. And a lot of the information that we have in the leak specifications, these come from Canon Rumors, and Canon Rumors says that these are considered pretty much fact. But rumors are rumors, and things can change at the last minute. But what do you guys think? Are you getting excited ahead of um, Thursday's announcement? I know I certainly am. And it's nice to get some more information. It's nice to be able to see the R6 and what it looks like, but I'm still curious as to what that button's going to be. I know there's something missing. There, there should be some writing right on top of it or right by it. I just wonder if that's a, a, a mode switch. But it, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win this Canon 50mm EF 1.2. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.